Now we're going to go get some content to download. Okay, so this is a search called NZB index. You'll find it NZB index.nl. And from here, you can search for different binary content. Okay, so what you want to do, you'll see here advanced search, you want to click on that. Over here where it says has NFO file, you want to click on that. The reason you want to do that is it'll bring in the whole group of files. Now, there are several files that exist within a proper NZB format. You can't just download one, you need all of them. Okay, so now what you could do here is also set a, a size if you want. So you can have a minimum size or a maximum size. And also a minimum age if you wanted to do that. Okay, so what we want to do is now we go up here and search for what we want. So whatever type of, of content you're looking for. Now this is equivalent to torrenting at this point if you're going to go and look for mu music or movies to download. So I'm just going to say that, that I don't condone it, of course, but this is entirely up to you. Now there's a rule about Usenet and that's never talk about Usenet. However, it's kind of a silly rule because the copyright providers are already aware of Usenet, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're going to do a search for 12 Years a Slave, which is a movie that came out recently. So let's do search. Okay, now let's uh, close the advanced search. Okay, now you'll see here, if you see something like this that says private, avoid that. What that is, is somebody has put the password behind a content locker, so you're going to have to go through and complete some offers to be able to get that. So we don't want that. So anything that says private, just ignore that. Okay, now, okay, here we have a .nzb file, which is what we want. Okay, now if you look over here, make sure that the size makes sense. So for a movie, if you see something that's 24 megabytes, you got to wonder if that is actually the movie or some sort of virus. And this is something else you need to be careful in here. Never click on something that you download that is an exe file. It's potentially dangerous, and there's a lot of that kind of thing in here. Okay, so let's look at the group. So you can view the collection. This is what I, what I was getting at earlier, that there are many files within here. Okay. So this is what makes up this download. So there's many pieces of it all over the place. Okay, so there's 69 pieces. All right, so let's go back. Okay, so this is the one here. So we're just going to click download. Okay, and it's a very quick download because all it downloads is a catalog of the links. Okay, so now we go back to here. And what we want to do is open that file. Okay, so go over to batch here. And then what you want to do is NZB import. Okay, so we're going to use that server. If you have more than one server, you can choose here. And what files do you want to import? So we'll click Add. Okay, and then we find where it is in our computer here. Okay, so here it is. Click on that and open. And then click Grab. I see here, create a separate download folder for each import file and save incomplete file. So we'll click Grab. It's importing now. And here are our batch jobs. Okay, so now it downloads each of these pieces and it creates a file for us. So what we need to do now is just wait. Now, if you look down here, you'll see there's your graph. It tells you what it's doing here. It's processed one of 67 items. The bytes downloaded, the bytes remaining, 
And then over here, it shows your thread count, which ones it's using and what, what it's doing here. It also over here shows you the amount of time left, so one hour and 14 minutes. So we'll just wait for that to download. Okay, now just something to watch out for here. You'll see that I got some errors here. And you'll see that a bunch of these are not downloading properly. Now, if we go, you need to make sure that you stay within your number of connections. So depending on the package you get from your provider, you'll only get a certain number of connections. So we have two connections. So what we need to do is go back in here, go back into server properties. And then down here where it says maximum allow connections, we need to put that down to two. Click OK. And then what we'll, we'll be doing is we'll select all these that had errors. And then we'll do retry. OK, so if you do that first to set your number of connections, then you're not going to have that problem. It looks like it's actually doing three here, even though it says it'll only do two. So I might be able to set that to three. But anyway, make sure that you set the number of connection connections correctly, or you will have a problem with this part here where you will have to resubmit them like I did here. OK, so we'll just continue to wait for it to finish here. OK, now another thing I did to speed this up, you'll see we're going along like this, and all of a sudden we have this big spike, was I added my ISP server that I, I'm able to use for Usenet through SHA to the server list. And then what I did was I went to some of the ones that said waiting to download. See, that we're still up here with the free account. And this, this one is much faster as well. But anyway, what I did was I went to waiting to download, and I selected some of them. And then right-click here and download with other server, and then I switched it to the other server. So right away, I started downloading five more threads here on top of the three that it's downloading here. I just reset this to three because it actually will use three. So now I have eight threads going at once, and it has knocked the download time down to 11 minutes. Okay, so as you see, the more threads you have going, the better off you are. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. If you have access to other servers, you can add them in as well and distribute the work amongst those servers. Okay, so we're getting towards the end here. When these are all downloaded, it'll switch to another batch job, which is watch here. And it'll be combining and then repairing the all the files into one file. Okay, so here it is repairing and extracting. Okay, so this will go on for a little bit. Okay, so at this point, it is finished. So now we go over to download folder. Here's our file folder. We'll go inside there. There's our NZB file. There is some system information. Here is another file folder. And we go in here, we'll see that we have the, this is the Abby file, I believe, here. There's an info file. And then there's a codice here that's an exe file, which I would not use. So now try and use it and see if it works. And if it doesn't, you can look at the video and see if you can find the codice for it. Let's see what happens here. OK, so it doesn't find it. OK, so what I would do is just see if you can find out what the codice is for this and download it. I would not try and run this exe file. It's just as likely to be a virus as anything else. And as I was saying, there can be problems with viruses. All right, so there you go. You now can get started using Usenet.